Hello YouTube, this is Chrissy at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. Thanks for being here today. In this video, I'm sharing a massive educational Amazon haul. These resources are to carry us through the remainder of 2021 and into 2022 for three children ages eight and under. Later on, I will post a haul exclusively for my two teenagers who will be going into their sophomore year. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I don't host many hauls and the ones that I do are usually around this season. So this is going to be a long video. Grab a snack, grab some coffee. And one more note before we get started, I am just getting over a bad cold. So please excuse my voice as it comes in and out as it pleases. have organized piles here of age groups so let's begin with the resources that I purchased for my four soon to be five-year-old so her skill level will be about um, pre-kindergarten uh, the complete brambly hedge I decided to go with this big edition that contains the original four seasonal stories published in 1980 and a four additional stories, Poppy's Babies, Sea Story, The High Hills, and The Secret Staircase. I know all three of my youngest will enjoy these sweet, gentle, and adventurous uh, stories of a community of mice living in this enchanting, whimsical world of Brambley Hedge. The stories and illustrations both are peaceful and promote harmony with nature, and that's the type of uh, enchanting world I want to read to my preschooler. I'm going to pair these stories with puppets created by Amber at Hearth Magic, and I know my Luna is going to love it. I'm going to share more videos of my plans and studies and non-Amazon resources in future videos. Next up is if you go down to the woods today, more than 100 things to find a poetry and I spy book. So this is the resource that I'll be using with her for poetry and also to further develop her logic, uh, visual discrimination and critical thinking skills, which are key foundations for reading and math. I love the size, uh, the large size of this book. The illustrations are super enchanting. Uh, the pictures of the woods and scenes of uh, a woodland school, a bunny's birthday party, and more of Bear's world through the seasons of the year. On each page, the reader is to spot fun things like Professor Owl giving a lesson of the moon and Skunk enjoying a snack. The poems are written by writer Rachel Piercy. The text is also a delight. This book is just a gem. We have several variations of alphabet books that we love, but do require a bit more of reading from my part. And also they're not board books, so we do have to be more careful and delicate with how a preschooler will use it. Uh, so I picked up this alpha block book more so that Luna can pick it up on her own. My idea for this purchase is also that it's perfect for on the go for our beach and park days or long car rides. I only picked up two engaging type of activity books, workbooks for Luna. The first is this one, the Nat Geo Cutest Animals Sticker Activity Book. Uh, Luna loves zoology and I've mentioned these Nat Geo sticker books a lot here on my channel. There are so many topics in this series. I think they're a wonderful sit down work resource for the early years because they're engaging. There are coloring and sticker activities, dot to dots, word searches, mazes, and short snippets of factual information and photography, fun illustrations on the topic or subject. The other workbook is this Learn Scissor Skills workbook. We've had many variations of these type of scissor skill books uh, by Melissa and Doug, by Schoolworks and Highlights. They're mostly all the same general idea. Car stock pages of fun pictures for the child to cut out. Luna likes to glue the picture back together on a piece of construction paper. Next up is a shapes puzzle. Uh, there are 36 wooden shape pieces and 50 design cards for the child to recreate. So similar to Tangrams. 
Wise Owl Playing Cards by Mud Puppy is one of the games I picked up for Luna. So this set is a twist on the card game Old Maid. We match the fox pairs and the player left with the single Wise Owl card wins. My kids enjoy playing Old Maid and we have another variation called Old Grumpy Bear by Junior Ranger and it's a big hit in our home. Everything made by Mud Puppy is really well made and it comes in this nice drawstring bag. Again, great for on the go. Another game is Head to Toe Domino's Animal Parade by Ibu. This set includes 28 thick cardboard dominoes with nicely illustrated colorful animal images. So we're matching the head to the body to complete an animal. Pick a flower memory game. Luna loves playing memory games and Ancient Egypt by Lawrence King Publishing is her favorite. This game is the same idea. Rather than matching the exact identical image, you're matching something that correlates with the flower. For example, the African marigold card matches with a day of the dead card. And so then we go to our instructional booklet and it reads the African marigold is called the Mexican or Aztec marigold because it's native to the Americans. It is a member of the daisy family and likes to be planted in full sun. It flowers in summer and autumn. In Mexico, it is recognized as the flower of the Day of the Dead. It's used in the Dia de los Muertos festival to decorate altars and graves. Its strong scent and bright colors are believed to entice souls back to visit during the festival. And while we don't believe or celebrate that, it's just awesome learning about other cultures, history, and nature. The cards are great quality and as always, the illustrations in uh, the sets up by Lawrence King uh, games are always beautifully done. I picked up a magic doodle mat for Luna. So this is a large plastic mat that you can lay out anywhere or we also enjoy hanging it up on a window with the suction cups included so it's like an easel. Uh, we fill the pens with water or you can also use a clean paintbrush and water and then doodle on the mat and the water reveals alphabet letters. There are stencils included, stamps, and an instructional booklet with how to draw prompts. I know this seems a bit babyish for a pre-K age. A tot would definitely enjoy this, but my Luna still enjoys using young toys. She loves that I spread out on the floor with her and we reveal the alphabet letters together. We practice the phonetic sounds and uh, she loves it so far. This is a set of wooden sensory bin tools. It's a set of seven wooden scoops, tongs, cups, and saucers. So the idea behind this is that we fill a bin uh, or a tray with rice or beans. I'm sure most of you are familiar with a sensory bin. Uh, she'll scoop and transfer and play and through this play, she's developing fine motor skills. For the price of this set, which was under $20, I believe the quality seems nice and I also appreciate that the set includes a bag for storage. Another sensory toy, Kukaru Dough and Clay Modeling Toy Set. The set includes a beautiful wooden board and seven wooden tools. The tools and board are made of mango wood, so this set should last us for years. There are no splinters or rough edges in the wood, which I highly appreciate, and the company claims to be non-toxic. We've already paired this with our homemade Play-Doh. Uh, she works on molding and cutting, rolling, stamping for hours, uh, developing motor skills, hand-eye coordination, promoting cognitive growth, kneading, rolling, and working with dough, or preparing little hands for writing. We're very, very happy with this purchase. Let's move on to the resources I picked up with my six-year-old in mind. Uh, he's an early reader right now and mastering easy addition and subtraction math, so about first grade level to give you an idea. This is a Geo and Map Skills Workbook by DK. 
We do build our own geography studies as I've shared in previous videos. So this workbook is more of just a guide for me so that I can make sure I'm hitting important map skills. Resources, Slam Ships, a sight word game. There are many variations of sight word games out there. I went with this one uh, for my space loving kid. There are 110 double-sided word chips in five vocabulary levels, so a total of 220 sight words. I call out the words and he picks them up with his UFO ship. We use magnet tiles a lot for math, uh, STEM, and just more learning activities. So I picked up this race slash ramp slopes to add on to our building. I build up our magnet block collection by picking up sets like this a little at a time. My Noah requested to learn more about robots, so I've made this upcoming school year a STEM and coding themed year for him. For a read aloud, I chose The Wild Robot. I've heard wonderful things about this series. It reads, can a robot survive in the wilderness? When robot Roz opens her eyes for the first time, she discovers that she is alone on a remote wild island. She has no idea how she got there or what her purpose is, but she needs to survive. After battling a fierce storm and escaping a vicious bear attack, she realizes that her only hope for survival is to adapt to her surroundings. So short chapters, some illustrations in every other chapter or so, uh, its setting takes place in nature and has adventure, all which the kids love. I'm excited for us to read this title. So to go with the robot theme, I picked up Botley 2.0, the coding robot by Learning Resources. I'm sure more of you than not are familiar with Botley. In this one, there are over 150 movements that Botley can be loaded to do. Noah will be introduced to logic, sequencing, and early coding fundamentals through play and screen free of a tablet. The 2.0 version Botley can also transform into things like a train, a police car, and more. I also picked up two add-ons, this crashing construction accessory set and this obstacle course action challenge accessory set. Still in the robot encoding theme, I picked up a tin can robot kit because this is just a classic. Every family should work on one together. Also a robot themed board game. This is Robot Face Race. The game to build up visual discrimination, critical thinking skills, and logic skills, all which are key pre-reading skills. It reads, a crazy inventor has built dozens of robot bodies and I need your help finding the matching heads. So the game board has 120 robot faces. You have your four game pieces, I will be the blue robot. And then the player shakes the randomizer to reveal the robot's eyes, nose, mouth, and face color. So here, for example, we're looking for a robot with a green face, a red mouth, blue eyes, a purple nose. Everyone then scans the board to find the matching robot head. The first player to find it places their token game piece on the face and gets to keep their token. First player to collect five tokens wins. And another Nat Geo sticker activity book. This one is on robots for Noah. So through this workbook, Noah will learn tons of amazing robot facts like the history of robots, the care of robots, flying robots, space robots, robots using competitions, uh, large robots, uh, robots that are used um, in the medical field, and robots that can cook. Great engaging resource. Okay, some of the resources that I picked up for my Bella who just turned eight years old and let's start with some independent readers. I've heard so much about the Magic Treehouse series, I finally decided to give it a go. Although I think the reading skill level might be a bit easy for her, I'm okay with that because it will build her reading confidence. So this title is number nine, Dolphins at Daybreak, her to read during an ocean unit study. I also picked up two more in the Zoe and Sassafras series, uh, the numbers three and four, Mer Horses and Bubbles and Catter Flies and Ice. Bella loves this series about a scientist girl and her cat Sassafras who help magical forest creatures. 
If you have any series recommendations that are innocent of bad uh, or rude behavior that promotes family relationships and the love for nature is a plus two, please leave me some recommendations down below because I do need to purchase more independent readers for her. Cat's Cradle, a book of string figures by Anne Ackers Johnson. And I picked this up for Bella to use as an opening activity, uh, maybe before handwriting or music to warm up her fingers, or even during a read aloud. This would also work great for our calm down basket. There's a page telling briefly a history of string games and instructions with pictures to learn five classic Cat's Cradle. Uh, cup and Saucer, Eiffel Tower, Witch's Broom, and Jacob's Ladder. I appreciate that it's spiral bound, that way she can leave it open as she's reading through the instructions. The pages are a nice cardstock material and it already includes a string. To be honest, I'm just excited to refresh my childhood memories of string games too. So here's a spoiler of Bella's handwriting resources for the new year. I will have videos sharing other resources, some curriculum we'll be using for all subjects for all ages of my kids, pre-K to 10th grade, so subscribe to get notified of those videos. Anyway, I decided to go with this series, Draw Right Now. If you're not already familiar with this series, it's a handwriting and drawing course. It's a collection of beginner drawing lessons and texts for practicing handwriting. Essentially, it's copy work, which Bella is already accustomed to through our literature guides. I love that this series is intertwined with other subjects like math, science, social studies, and geography. If you've been around our channel for a while, you know we love to weave all these subjects together. There are eight themed books in this series. I went with book seven, which is on Animals of the World Part 1, Forest Animals, and book five, The United States, to correlate with a geography unit later on in the year. The books are colorful and non-consumable. I believe you can purchase an accompanying workbook to keep the students work together, but we will be using our own notebooks. Also, what's neat is that this series continues onto cursive once the child has mastered print. Learning resources, Pizza Fraction Fun, a math resource for Bella this year as we work towards mastering fractions. There are quite a few, actually 67 to be exact, pieces in here, so I'm not going to open it up, but this game is a visual for understanding fraction concepts. There are seven different games to practice identifying fractions, matching fraction equivalents, fraction addition, and subtraction, all by building pizzas. All right, let's jump into some of the read alouds I chose for this year. Um, actually, let me start with this CSB Kids Bible. I bought Bella her very first Bible. We have several young children's Bibles, but Bella was asking for an actual Bible she can reference. It's a complete text of the Christian Standard Bible with larger font, dozens of full color pages, studies, maps, and pictures. Packs by Sarah Pennypacker. I have not read through this yet. I usually like to skim over read alouds before reading them for the kids, but I have heard wonderful things about the story. So Pax the Fox and Peter, a boy, have been inseparable ever since Peter rescued him as a kid. But Peter's dad enlists in the military and Peter has to return Pax to the wild. So I think the adventure begins when they both set out to find each other again. Next up is The Wind in the Willows, and this is the hardcover version by the Sterling Illustrated Classics series. There are many editions to this classic, so I want to be clear that this is the edition in the full text. The quality of the paper is nice, and I appreciate that, and uh, also the illustrations are just marvelous. The kids are going to be so excited to have these gorgeous illustrations to look at while we read this. The main characters of the story are Mr. Toad, Badge, and Ratty, three friends, and we follow along their friendship and adventures. I have a family literature guide by Hearth Magic to accompany this book, and I can't wait. I know it's going to be complete magic. A Bear Called Paddington, another English classic, and read aloud we have to go with a family literature guide. We also enjoy reading classics that have been made into films, we make it a fun family movie night on the projector. So Paddington Bear travels all the way from Peru when the Brown family first met him in Paddington Station. 
Since then, their lives have never been the same, for ordinary things become extraordinary when Paddington is involved. Let's get into some resources for unit studies for this upcoming school year. Bella requested a study about marine mammals, so I'm preparing this big ocean unit study. I picked up safari LTD tubes, whales, and dolphins, four sensory bins for my youngest, and three-part cards to identify whales and dolphins like the bottlenose and spotted dolphins, beluga whale, blue whale, just to name a few. We love safari LTD tubes, we have a growing collection, so this is nice to add to our collection of safari LTD tubes. Our read aloud during our ocean unit study will be A Whale of the Wild by Roseanne Perry. It reads, a young orca whale must lead her brother on a tumultuous journey to be reunited with their pod. This animal adventure novel explores family bonds, survival, global warming, and a changing seascape. It also includes information about orcas and their habitats. Whales and Illustrated Celebration, this book explores interesting facts about these marine mammals from species like the blue whale to the Amazon River dolphin. It also touches on ecology, habitats, anatomy, and behaviors like beaching and fluking. Beautiful, just stunning full color art on every page. The perfect reference and inspiring book for nature journaling. I'm super excited about this resource. Life in the Ocean, the story of oceanographer Sylvia Earle. This year, we started many studies of women in history, and we've enjoyed that so much, we're going to continue that into the new school year. While we're on the Ocean Unit study, we'll do some research about Sylvia Earle, who has dedicated her life to oceanography. Unlike several other children's biography picture books, they don't have much text. I enjoy that this book does, so it targets the older elementary audience. The illustrations are also so whimsical and there's an author's note on environmentalist advocacy for children towards the back of the book. A Ravensburger 200 piece puzzle. My Bella really enjoys puzzles, usually as an opening activity for the school day, sometimes as I read out loud. She's ready for a challenge so I bumped her up another skill level in puzzles. Uh, and this is our favorite puzzle brand, great quality pieces and illustrations, just a great addition to our collection of ocean resources. Whales and Dolphins Coloring Book by Dover Coloring Books. I've shared many times about how much we enjoy these nature-themed coloring books that have educational facts to go with each page. And another Nat Geo sticker activity book, Ocean Animals for My Youngest to work through during our unit study. The Rainforest will be another unit study this year as I weave it in with a geography and cultural study on South America will visit the Amazon Rainforest. I've been collecting resources for this study for a while, so here are some resources that I'm adding to our collection. Our Women in History study during this will be on Margaret Lohman. This is the Leaf Detective, how Margaret Lohman uncovered secrets in the rainforest. It reads, this picture book biography tells the story of Meg Lohman, a groundbreaking female scientist called a real-life Lorax by National Geographic, who was determined to investigate the marvelous undiscovered world of the rainforest treetops. So another children's biography book that is filled with text uh, and of course I mean these illustrations are just stunning. And I forgot about this reader as it was in the rainforest pile, another magic treehouse title, number six, Afternoon on the Amazon. This will be an independent reader for my eight-year-old during our rainforest study. Mud Puppy Rainforest Animals 500 Piece Puzzle. I couldn't find a Ravensburger puzzle on the rainforest, so I went with this one. It's 500 pieces, so we'll probably work on it together, and I don't mind at all. I also enjoy puzzles. Two more books for two topics I want to touch on for nature studies, Masters of Disguise, Camouflage, and Migration, Incredible Animal Journey. Let's start with migration. Um, to begin, there's an introduction on migration and then 20 animal features like the humpback whale, uh, the emperor penguin, monarch butterfly, barn swallow, a globe skimmer dragonfly, great white shark, sea turtle, osprey, fruit bat, 
so many interesting animals to learn about and many different ways to use this book it can be used as a reference book for example during our ocean unit study we can reference to the great white shark page or the green turtle uh, we can use as a read-through book from cover to cover or we can feature an animal a week just beautiful illustrations what a wonderful resource and masters of disguise uh, camouflaging creatures and magnificent mimics i just love how in this book we visit each continent and my goodness take a look at the illustrations large and colorful and stunning I figured camouflaging animals would be an appropriate, interesting topic to study during an ocean and our rainforest study. Alright, moving on. I did mention that I'm placing together a study on the United States as we head into North America. I plan that towards the end of the school year. This is 50 Adventures on the 50 States, and let me tell you that we all love this book. Uh, one of my teens is just so fascinated with this book and is constantly picking it up. Uh, there is a feature for each state and an adventure in that state. Such fun adventures to read about, the illustrations, the color palette, and the pages of this book are super, super quality. This is also such a nice resource to add to our collection of uh, the U.S. National Parks resources that we already own. Another resource for this U.S. study is the popular game by Scholastic, Race Across the USA Game. This consists of a game board, 220 question cards, 50 state cards, four scorecards and four airplane pawns or game pieces one die and instructions so the gist is that the players race across the usa to be the first to visit six states answer geography questions about the state and then get back to their home state to win the game this new school year we're also going to be adding artist studies to our family or together studies the first is dk the arts a visual encyclopedia more so for my teens, but I'll share it because it is in this pile and it's just a giant beautiful feast of all sorts of art and history, artists, mediums, and tools. Painters, Masters of Western Art, Fandex Family Field Guides, we own several of these and other subjects and it's just a fun resource with the die cutouts and snippets of facts. This features 50 five zero artists. I purchased an artist portfolio study on Vincent Van Gogh as the spine of our first artist study and that was from Simply Charlotte Mason and I'll share more of that in another video. But I also picked up a few resources on Amazon to supplement that and the first here is Vincent Theo and the Fox, a mischievous adventure through the paintings of Vincent Van Gogh. The story in this book is a work of fiction. Vincent van Gogh and his brother Theo are real historical characters, but the places, events, and incidents in the story are the product of the author's imagination. The story is based on known facts about van Gogh's life. The story is about Vincent and his brother Theo, and as boys they wonder what they should be when they grow up. One day they spy a mischievous fox sneaking into a farmer's cart and they give it a chase. So on this journey through over 30 of Van Gogh's greatest works, the boys and the fox discover how to become the best you can be when you grow up. This resource is a unique concept. I will say that Van Gogh's art isn't the best quality as it's photo replicas of his work, but I still can appreciate his art, a gentle and fun introduction to his art. Van Gogh, a stained glass coloring book by Dover Coloring Books, another unique resource. Vincent's most famous paintings on stained glass paper. For us to fill in, we'll probably use chalk pastels for this. The idea is colored glass used to form decorative designs and you hang it up on a window. It just looks beautiful, super fun resource. And the Starry Night 100 piece puzzle by Fine Art for Kids. I don't know about the quality of this because I haven't opened it. Of course, I will update on this when I put together a video on this artist study later in the upcoming school year. 
All right, just a few more resources and we're done here. Uh, these are fun resources for all of us to use together. Snap Circuits in Motion. This is one of the larger kits by Snap Circuits since I have several children that will share it. The projects include propelling a plane among other projects that will require motion. Uh, lots of pieces in here with 168 projects to complete. This is something that I hand off to one of my high schoolers to instruct the youngest. I'm always looking for ideas and resources that the teens and young ones can bond with. Super important for the teens to be mentors and the young ones to keep the teens in their childhood as long as possible. Next is Word of the Day by Primary Concepts. So our household is obsessed with learning new words, refining our vocabulary, we can say. It's one of our family things or quirks. I like this because it's not just a word, but 10 minute a day oral vocabulary activities for each word. So each word has a word story, uh, so a short passage putting the word to use. Then it has a talk about it prompt. For example, let's list some words that are similar. Have you ever felt weary? Describe the feeling. And the third prompt is an acted out exercise. So 192 pages, and I do appreciate that it's spiral bound. Guess who, and I'm sure we're all familiar with this classic game, wonderful for learning and practice using uh, adjectives just as it is. Uh, but I bought it to use with printables on Etsy that are formatted to replace the original cards. There are many different topics like birds and oceans, space, human anatomy, dinos. Uh, there are even blank templates for you to create your own, so I am very excited about this. DK's Complete Children's Cookbook, Delicious Step-by-Step -step Recipes for Young Chefs. This massive book contains more than 150 recipes to teach young chefs basic techniques. And I do enjoy that before we get into the actual recipes, uh, there's a before you begin section. So a section on healthy eating, on kitchen tools, so different ways and techniques to cook and ways to bake as well. And then it's divided in uh, categories of the day like breakfast, soups and salads, light bites, and then your main meals. There is a recipe for every occasion, even a small section towards the back uh, for party foods like uh, veggie platters and lemonade ice pops. I was hesitant to purchase this because I was afraid that maybe it would be too difficult for my eight-year-old to follow. However, I was surprised with each instruction or with each step, there is also beautiful photography to go with it. To go along with that, I bought a deluxe kids apron. Now this brings three because I have three littles that'll want to assist their uh, sister as well. Water resistant, fire resistant, durable material, and it claims to be stain resistant. Uh, it also included these iron on uh, letters so that maybe we can customize each apron to uh, with the child's name and each apron also has a chef's hat to go with it. All right, friends, that's the end of this massive haul. For those of you that did stick around till the end, I wholeheartedly appreciate you. Don't forget that I have linked just about everything that I can from this video down below in the description box and leave me a comment with some fun things that you've picked up for the school year. I might just have to check them out as well.